Hi, welcome back. Um, today we are singing an ode to MAC Cosmetics, if you will. Um, I don't know what the deal has been, I feel like in the past probably three to four years. I've been seeing posts that um, kind of make fun of MAC and talk about how MAC has just died as an overall company. And I just, I don't know where these accusations are coming from, but I feel personally attacked myself. I'm not sure if there's been a generational switch and people that are just in their teens and early 20s look at Mac, kind of like how I probably did in my teenage years at, let's say, um, maybe Estee Lauder. That's the only example I could think of. Although Estee Lauder has some bomb products, you know, it's it just as a younger person, there are certain makeup brands you look at as being um, dated. But I just don't feel like MAC is in that category yet. There's so many classic staples that I still use not only on myself, but in my professional kit from MAC. I am talking like daily use. I think I did a tag one time that was along the lines of, you know, if I lost all my makeup, what would I replace my kit with? And I remember from that video, I talked about so many MAC products just because I feel like there are some classic staples, gorgeous shades, um, and as far as like longevity and the types of looks you can get with their products, I feel like it's endless. There is such a large selection with MAC Cosmetics. So we're going to be doing full face of MAC today, just as kind of, you know, we're paying our respects. So we are starting out with quite possibly, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is MAC's best product in my opinion, and that's their cult classic uh, face and body foundation. I have raved about this for years and years and years on my channel. It would be the foundation that I would purchase. I've said this many times, if I could only have one foundation, this would probably be the one that I pick. Uh, I do have a video talking about how to properly apply this because a lot of people don't understand um, the texture of this foundation. It's a very unique formula, but it is one of my all-time favorites. So I'm actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cheat right off the bat because I ran out of my C2 shade. I only have C1, which is slightly light on me. So I'm gonna add some Charlotte Tilbury Unisex Healthy Glow. This is how I like to wear this foundation anyways. I have always paired these two together. And so what I do is I just get um, a little drop on the back of my hand. The shade I'm using today is C1, but Technically C2 would be a little bit of a better match. And I also just added a little dot of that um, Charlotte Tilbury Unisex Healthy Glow. It's just gonna help bronze it up a little bit so it's not pale on me. And generally the way that I apply this is with my fingers. So I just have um, moisturized skin and this is the recommended way that most MAC artists will tell you to um, apply this. It's so beautiful, it's so skin-like, very easy to apply once you get the hang of it. The reason um, some people are perplexed by this formula is because it almost starts dragging on the skin when it dries. It's this very interesting, almost like flexible texture that starts to become draggy, like in a, in a really weird tacky way. Um, but I've read and I've seen people talk about the reason for this is because it is a layering foundation and it dries down so you can um, prep for the next layer. So um, another reason why I really love this, you can go from about a sheer to medium coverage with this formula, I find. I generally just kind of build it up to like a light, light medium. Okay, I just did one side just so you could get an idea of what one good layer looks like on the skin. Still looks like your skin, but very perfected. And I always recommend this, especially for people who have mature skin or possibly textured skin because it just lays so well. Um, it really, I just don't find that it ever makes skin look worse. This is a foundation I've been keeping in my professional kit for, I'm gonna say at least seven years now. I mean, possibly longer because I've been doing makeup for 10. Um, and it never lets me down. It's generally the foundation 
that I go with. Okay, I'm adding one more small layer just to my under eye area just to show you how this builds up. And after I've applied my first layer, the way that I'll go in with the second is just really gently tap it in. That way I don't disturb anything I've already put down. This is just so beautiful. Like I, I don't understand how anyone could hate this foundation. I think it is just the most perfect thing to ever grace the makeup industry. I know there's some of you who watch my channel that are haters on my face and body. I get it. Everything can't work for everyone, but I'm ready to fight you. For a bit of concealer, I'm gonna take Studio Finish Concealer, which is my favorite with MAC. I know that um, Pro Longwear Concealer had its run on YouTube, but I just never got on board with Pro Longwear. I don't know why. I never really loved the formula. Like, I thought it was okay. Um, but I've always been a Studio Finish stand over Pro Longwear. So, um, I just feel it's a little bit more flexible. It's a little bit more creamy. Sits a little bit better on my skin. Definitely a preference thing. Um, but yeah, Pro Longwear Fluid was just, I don't know, not my thing. So ironically enough, even though I love uh, cream products, I don't have a ton of matte cream products. And I feel like they are a little bit limited in that area. Uh, back in the day, they had some really good cream blushes, which I don't believe that they have anymore. And there was a shade called Something Special. I wore it on my wedding day, and it was just like the most ethereal and pretty pink color. They don't make it anymore. I also had a shade called Britwit, which was kind of like a muted mauve brown. Really pretty color as well. But to my knowledge, I know those were discontinued. They may have brought them back. I have not been to a MAC store to investigate. So I'm gonna be using a little bit more um, powder products than what I generally do uh, for this video. That's where I'm trying to get at. For my powder, I have um, Studio Fix Powder. This is not one that I would generally like recommend to set the face, but as long as you're pretty light-handed with it, um, it works fine, it looks fine. So I, normally I would go for like a um, mineralized skin finish. That's one of their really popular setting powders. I had to, um, I don't own a mineralized skin finish in my skin tone. I went to Ulta today to pick up just a couple of filler products that I needed and they were completely out of mineralized skin finish. So I'm just very lightly tapping my skin with Studio Fix powder because this is technically considered a powder foundation. And this is what I always recommend for those of you who prefer pressed powder when I talk about powder foundation routines and using bare minerals. This is generally the option I will recommend if you feel like you've not been the best suited for bare minerals or loose powder in general. I love this formula as just wearing it by itself basically. So this is actually a blush and it's called Harmony. I'm going to use it as more of like a bronzer contour today. Um, Harmony and Blunt, those are two blushes that MAC I believe they still make both of these, but a lot of people used to use those as bronzer contour shades. And I have Harmony. I haven't used it in ages. You can see it has definitely a little bit of that pink undertone to it, um, but it really doesn't come off that way. It's, it's very nice, especially if you have uh, more fair skin because it kind of gives you that like two in one look. Like if you don't wanna apply a blush and a bronzer, this is something you could get away with just using by itself because it's, um, what's the word? It's so like multi, not multi-dimensional. The color can just swing both ways, basically. I mean, it's just such a pretty kind of delicate shade. For an actual bronzer, I do have a mineralized skin finish that is in more of a bronzy tone. It's called Give Me Sun. This used to be everything back in the day. Like I remember if you own this, then you were basically in the it club. Give Me Sun is not only the orangest bronzer you will probably ever find on the market, 
I, I really don't understand what everyone's obsession was with it. And that's probably coming from a fair skin tone standpoint. If you're darker than me, then this definitely does look a little bit better. Um, but on me, it can get a little bit Oompa Loompa really quick. But still to this day, I own it. And you know what? I'll pull it out and use it every now and then when I feel like I need a little sun. I need a little, a little orange in my life. All right, new product alert for me. I saw this at Ulta today and I didn't need blush. I had quite a few of the mineralized blushes from MAC. Uh, I had my old school Warm Soul here. This was the reformulated Warm Soul. It's not the original, original Warm Soul, but these were actually my favorite blushes from MAC. They're the, um, the mineralized ones. They're very shimmery and ethereal looking but i saw these and i was like you know what we'll give it a shot and they're called the glow play blush they're kind of like that bouncy blush hybrid between like a powder and a cream i got the shade so natural which looks almost identical to warm soul um but we know i'm all about that nude blush game so I, you know what? I don't even think I own a formula like this. I don't even, I'm not even sure what type of brush. Let's use this brush with it. Cause it's kind of like the Maybelline. Do you remember the little bouncy collection Maybelline used to have back in the day? That's, that's what this is like. This is like super fair. I'm not getting a, a ton of payoff here. When I swatch it, it's barely visible on the back of my hand. So just a heads up, it's, it's very light blush. Okay, I feel like that's about all we're going to get from that. Don't really love it, but you know, something to play around with. Um, where is my, okay, my beloved, oh, I just, cream color bases, I will always have a special place in my heart for these. Um, these are basically multi-use cream shimmer products. They come in a few colors. I know that was like the worst description ever. Basically, it's just a cream and you can use it as a highlighter. You can use it as an eyeshadow. Some people use it like underneath their foundation. There's like a lot of different ways you can use this. Of course, I have always used it as a highlighter and I have the shade called Hush. This is, oh, I just love this shade. I think it's the most perfect, subtle cream highlighter. I think it was probably one of the first cream highlighters that I ever owned. And I just love it so much. I think it's great for uh, mature or textured skin because it does not give off like a shimmery effect on the skin. It really just adds this soft bit of pearlescent light. I also really love the shade Pearl. If you're a little bit more fair than me, it's definitely more of a yellow based cream, but it's much lighter than the Hush and it will come off as a pearly undertone. Whereas Hush, does have a little bit of like this pinky peach undertone to it. So that's why I think it layers really well on top of blush, but I love it. I think it's just so classic and pretty. Max brow products, I'm really not about to fight anyone on. I've never been loyal to their brow products. I have a couple, I just have the eyebrow pencil here and then their shape and shade brow tints, which are kind of like the felt tip. I think I'll just probably use a combination of both. Uh, I mean, I just, I don't know. I've never been super blown away with their brow products. I'm just gonna take the um, Shape and Shade brow tint, the felt part, and do a couple strokes through the front of my brows. I'm excited about the eyes, because I'm pulling out uh, my Pro Longwear Paint Pot. This is one I have not used in a while and it's called Vintage Selection. It is probably my favorite out of all of the MAC Paint Pots. It's just that perfect, like, oystery, ugh, gorgeous, gorgeous color. So I'm gonna use that all over my lid as a base with my uh, MAC 217 brush here, shout out, OG. 
And we're just gonna lay this down as an overall base for the eyelids. This is such a gorgeous color if you um, wanna wear it by itself as well. So now that I have that down as a base, I'm gonna work from the Semi Sweet Times Nine palette. I actually just got this. Um, I see Hindash use this all the time. And since I just never buy eyeshadows anymore, I was just avoiding it. Then I was like, you know what? The Vintage Selection is a very pretty color, but it's a little, you know, by itself, it's very simple. I wanted to up the drama a little bit. So we're gonna work from probably these four cooler tone shades right here, just because Vintage Selection does come off a little bit more on the um, gray scale. So I'm gonna take this charcoal tone with a MAC 239 short handle, just kind of like a standard eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna start working that in almost like an eyeliner. So I'm just slightly going to wing this out, almost like a little bit of a cat eye effect. Where, what, are, what is it called now? The, um, I don't know, I forgot. The one that Kendall Gender is popular for. That's like kind of the um, direction I'm heading. I'm also mixing um, this shade right here. I think it's called Pink Sienna. But I'm also mixing just a little bit of that in too. It's kind of like serving as a transitional shade. I'm gonna take that pink sienna shade and use that on my lower lash line. I like it, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna tight line with a little bit of Teddy, which is the classic eye coal from MAC. If you saw where I reviewed the Wayne Goss eye coals, I compared them to the MAC ones and Teddy was like my ride or die for years. I mean, I like I just use this eyeliner almost every single day. This was also a favorite mascara of mine for several years, and it's the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash. Also one that my mom uses constantly because she's always saying that I, um, or not eyeliner, but mascara smudges on her, and this is like one of the few ones she says does not. But I just remember this being my favorite mascara. It looks nice. It actually builds up really well without clumping. Okay, I'm a little perplexed on what to do with my lips because I had a plan. I was going to use one of my all-time favorite lipsticks. Actually, I have two, but they're almost identical. Yash and Honey Love from MAC are like one of my, or two of my favorite nude shades. And I forgot that probably like six months ago, I did a clean out and had to get rid of a lot of my expired stuff. And I'm pretty sure those lipsticks were in it because they're nowhere to be found. So I just have some old school nude shades here. Um, and none of these are really my favorites. Creme de Nude, oh my God. I remember when everyone and their mother was using this. This was kind of like the pale nude lip Kim Kardashian moment. Myth was also the same thing. A very, very light nude shade. And then I have this one called Bear Bling, which Again, these are all like light, pale AF flesh colors. I don't know, I don't know. We may have to use something different. I am going to use Strip Down as my lip pencil though. What 
what the hell, let's just, we'll pop a little bit of myth on in the center. <laughs> Do you see how much that lightened that up? Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to blend it a little bit more seamlessly. And finally, to keep the nude thing going, the only MAC lip gloss I had in my collection is a cream sheen glass in Boy Bait, which again, I just, I remember, you know, we were all in that nude lip trend and this was like the classic milky kind of nude pink, very similar to NARS Turkish Delight, which again was a very iconic Kim Kardashian makeup product. Um, but I do love, I love most of MAC's lip gloss formulas, but the cream sheen glasses, I'm assuming they still make these. Surely they still do. I just feel like they were always popular sellers. Um, really love the formula on these. So we're just gonna, we're gonna go for it. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Probably one of my favorite looks I've done in the past like few months since quarantine. All of these products look stunning. I have absolutely no complaints. See, this is, I'm just like rarely disappointed in MAC products. So this is where I just don't understand where all the animosity is coming from, where all of the disrespect is heading towards the brand. I will say the launches, the, the amount of launches that they have in a year, it's like five different campaigns a month. I don't even know how they keep up with that. That can get a little excessive, but as far as their classic products go, I'm just always so pleased. I still this day will stand behind their lipsticks. They have just one of the best lipstick selections or probably the best out of any cosmetic company. Beautiful shades, shades for all skin tones. It, I just I just feel like I'm ride or die. I'm always gonna be a Mac Stan. And I just wanted to remind you that, hey, the products are still banging. They're still good. I mean, this look, it's a banger. I'm loving it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what your favorite MAC product is down below. Let me know what some of your old school favorites were. Um, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.